how can I tell if my girth uh, or saddle is causing discomfort to my horse? Well, you are fortunate because I recently attended the 2018 NEAEP, which stands for Northeast Association of Equine Practitioners, <laughs> and Dr. Sue Dyson, who's from the UK, she's a world-renowned sports medicine veterinarian and saddle fitting expert gave not only a lecture but a wet lab so a hands-on demonstration and we got to participate oh, cool. and feel things she had us run through um, looking at a saddle and checking the symmetry of the panels underneath we checked the points of the tree we put the saddle on and then felt underneath the panel all the way from the withers to the back to make sure there was even pressure no bridging um, we measured the length of the saddle with, with um, T18 or the last rib Okay. Yeah, wow. sci yeah, yeah scientific you guys really... we, we looked how the billets hang, like they should hang um, uh, vertical and not with a forward lean or a backward lean. And then um, the gullet, which is the, the open space in, on the top of the saddle, where mm -hmm. the saddle fits on the horse's back, that should be about four fingers wide, and they were four man fingers wide. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so you would slide your fingers, four fingers Well, you underneath. can just look at the saddle, yeah. like put on your legs, and, and then if you can put four fingers between the two panels in the gullet, then it's wide. But some of them are very narrow, and those lay on the spine of the horse, and so those would be, not be appropriate. Those would, would cause problems right away. But she had a great quote. She said, it's not rocket science if your fingers get jammed just too tight. And we're all <laughs> like, oh, well, I don't know. Oh, great. So um, some red flags for pressure points on the saddle or signs of an ill-fitting saddle, mm -hmm. which is what she asked, is um, abnormal hair wear, areas where the hair coat becomes wavy or ruffled, mm -hmm. like after you ride, you take it off, and the hair has been rubbed sort of sideways or forward, that uh, means the saddle's moving, Okay. so that's a sign. Um, dry spots within the sweaty spot, so if you look where the the sweat pattern is on the horse, and then all of a sudden there's a little area of, of dry, mm -hmm. that indicates that there's localized pressure that's heavy enough to uh, press hard enough to keep the, the sweat, the follicles from sweating. Oh, okay. So that's a, a focal point. Um, there can even be focal swellings under the saddle. So when you take the saddle off, there could be an area that's raised and elevated in edematous because of the saddle didn't fit right. Okay. So Are there certain areas you should be looking more concerned about to see and those? Not really. I mean, anywhere the saddle contacts the horse's back, you should be observing mm -hmm. for these things. Now, there's also signs, like behavioral signs, right, yes. and performance signs. Um, sh she's doing some, there's a paper out about every year, and I've got the, some titles of some that are really good, and we'll, we'll share those at the end. But she's created what's called an ethogram. An ethogram is a, a list or a table of... Um, behaviors or activities that horses or animals in this case horses do to demonstrate in this case um, lameness but some of them she's beginning to tie specifically to saddle fit mm. now if I, I'm just gonna read them all and again these right now it's not saddle fit specifically but it's musculoskeletal lameness but it's ears back for more than five seconds mouth opening for more than ten seconds tongue out change in eye posture and expression. She calls it an intense stare. What it, just looking at one thing and not, blankly. like a soft eye. You know when you're like, e e e people have done mm -hmm. that, okay. Um, going above the bit, uh, head tossing, head tilting, unwillingness just to go forward, crookedness, hurrying, changing or breaking gait spontaneously, poor quality canter, so this could be uh, crooked, ch uh, changing, like swapping leads, breaking, also resisting and stumbling and toe dragging. Okay, so these aren't all just related to saddle fit. Their, their lameness, their yeah. signs of pain, some of them she's beginning to say, when I take away the pain, like they block a horse during a lameness exam, and some of these go away and some remain, mm. the ones that remain tend to be associated with saddle fit. Interesting. Yeah. Because I noticed you're reading some of those. I was like, there's a couple horses who just popped into my brain, and mm -hmm. I'm sure for mm -hmm. most of you at home too. Yeah. So in our wet lab, we got to put a, a saddle on a horse, assess the fit with the, the points I told you earlier, and then we watched the horse go, and we would look at the length of stride and how comfortable the horse was and how much he used his back and if he rounded and went on the bit, and then we would change the saddle and see how differently mm. the horse moved. And so just in the difference of the saddle, same rider, same bit, same footing, the horse went markedly different just because of the saddle fit, so because like it gave them more freedom of, of 
shoulder movement, let's yeah, say. Yeah, so if the saddle's like sitting too tight on the withers or compressing their shoulder too much, it's yeah. gonna impact how yeah. much they can. Or it's rocking or it's slipping from side to side or it's, um, you know, you can look at the, at the where this rider sits and the saddle can be leaned back or leaned forward, it should be level. Mm -hmm. So all those kinds of things affect. She also made a point of saying, and that's why we have these, that the girth is very important too, as is the saddle pad. Okay. So her warning about the saddle pad is make sure that when you saddle up, pull that pad up in the gullet of the pommel. So it's not pressing down. Exactly, because she said the pad itself, just material, can cause enough pressure on the withers to make the, the horse sore. Just that thin little pad? Yep, yep. And then as far as girth, um, so this one is the, the prestige anatomic. Um, this, like if the horse was towards you and the back end was here, this is the front and it provides a little um, shoulder and elbow relief and those are the two, those, those, those are the areas that horses need some um, relief in. So this is a popular girth. And then she also made a point of saying, if you get a girth with elastic, make sure it has elastic on both ends like this one, because if you have a girth with elastic just on one end, you can imagine that it pulls differently. It's gonna have more pull on one side yeah, versus another. Yeah, other. so if you're gonna have elastic, it's gotta be equal to e equilibrate those forces. So it was a very interesting wet lab. And we're seeing a lot more of these like ergonomic designs. Correct. Uh, in a lot of tack now, one with girths, uh, and of course also now with bridles and things like that to yeah. provide more comfort and movement well, for Well, and the thing with them is, just because it's it's labeled ergonomic or it says it's designed to do something, it may not do that in your horse. Mm. So you have to read your horse's ethogram. <laughs> and if you put a girth on and you have ears back and he won't go and he's crooked and he's hurrying, he's rushing, maybe that's not the girth for your horse. Try a different girth. And then your horse will tell you, oh, I like that girth better. And it might not be an anatomic girth. Mm. It, it, it might be a regular just girth, and, but he likes that better. So then you just gotta do what he likes. It's been my experience, the more expensive it is, the more my horse oh. likes it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But I will say, uh, with saddle fitting, obviously it can be super challenging uh, to try and find the right fit. We do have our test ride program here at Smart Pack. That's right. So you can always have a saddle, have it sent out, mm -hmm. you can ride in like you would your normal saddle, mm -hmm. uh, have your vet, farrier, trainer look at it to make sure it's a good fit, and then if it works or it doesn't work, you can just send it right back to us. Right. The other thing she um, pointed out was, if you have a saddle that can be flocked, then I assumed I, I had a saddle sort of from custom saddle right now, the Wolfgang Solo yes. that we sell, okay. And it was fitted to Newman. I'm like, great, it's all done. And she said, no, no, <laughs> horses' backs change in a ride. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly seasonally. So coming out of winter, they might have lost some top line and they have a shape. And so you need it restuffed then or looked at, at least looked yeah. at by a competent saddle fitter. And then after the show season and you've clinics and less and you're going into winter when their top line is probably the biggest it's gonna mm -hmm. be, it needs to be refitted. And so she's like, have it done at least twice a year, if not four times. And I went, oops, my bad, because <laughs> I didn't. But that's a great point. I didn't mm -hmm. think about that mm -hmm. during how much in shape they are during right. seasons. That's a great idea. Their back changes, point. yep. Well, hopefully that was helpful for you, Sophia.